Hi, I'm Mitch. Welcome to the workshop. I'd like to share with you today the solution to a small problem I encountered today uh, preparing or flattening a board uh, for a small tabletop. So I've shown in the past how to flatten a board using a plane which is long enough so that you can cut right to the far edge and still have support over the front edge. Um, for a small board like this I can use a jack plane and we work across the board, so cross grain. Now you can immediately see when you do that that there's a tendency to perhaps knock off the rear corner. We normally solve that problem by just taking a block plane and planing a small bevel along the back. However, this is oak, it's a little bit brittle and if we look carefully at the side here we can see that the grain is running out like so, reasonably steeply. That leaves a tendency when I'm planing across to catch the end of one of these fibres, obviously lots of these fibres, and for them to tear out that way. Now an easy solution is to take the plane and to angle it slightly, that way we get a slicing action. Although we're coming straight across the board like that, we are at least slicing in the direction that the grain's coming out of the board. Now that problem isn't so rare and maybe quite easy to work out, but that is coupled with the fact that on this other side, the grain is going in the opposite direction. So over this side, we want to angle the plane in that direction. So how do I work this board? If it, that side I want to be in that direction, and by the time I get to the other side, I want to be in that direction. I'm going to plane, first of all, a series of passes with the plane angled and just cutting from roughly the centre of the board out across the far edge. And then follow that up with a series of passes on this side with the plane in the opposite direction. any material off the back, we haven't got any tear out in either of these directions and so we can continue now to bring the board down flat. jack and we can see plane tracks and on this far side to me they're coming up to about here and the board and on the front side they're coming up to about here so we've got a little gap about two inches through the middle there where we're not plating anything so that's definitely low. I also find that these planes tracks are longer because the toe of the plane doesn't reach right the way across the board so I also know that part of this area is still low as well. Now it's quite a good idea is to flip the board around and work uh, with this as the far edge and we'll put the bevel down the back before we start on that and just make sure we play in the correct direction again. change back to going at that angle. So I know I've gone right the way across the board so we're virtually flat here but I have to be careful not to plane any further then. Well what will be is where wherever the grain direction changes in the board. Can't be exactly certain where it is but it certainly has happened by then. So if we go for the lowest point which is roughly here, try not to plane any further than there. I'm also going to wind the blade back a little bit. This isn't going to confuse you. We've got a uh, almost like a checkerboard effect happening here, a diamond pattern. That's because planing in that direction 
from here to there, the plane's going like that, and planing from here over towards you, the plane is still angled towards that end, but obviously it's coming from a different direction now. So you get one set of plane tracks like that, and one like that, and so we get the diamonds. jack going along the grain. Probably all of that area in that direction and then that area in the other direction. Please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe and follow me on social media for extra photos and videos from the workshop. Cheerio!